Hello there, adventurers, and welcome to Wall ADM. Today, we're going to use the random tables found in Loresmith's Ultimate Guide to Remarkable Inns and Their Drinks to make our very own tavern or inn that we could put into our game or our homebrew world. So, so give the bard a gold piece, a play another song. Let's fill our tankard full of that delicious dwarven stout, and let's create our very own homebrewed, randomly generated Remarkable Inn. <laughs> So Remarkable Inns and Their Drinks is a lot more than just randomly generating a tavern or inn to put in our game. Section 1 has 8 fully fledged inns ready to go. All you have to do is pick one and plop it right into your game for your players to explore. If you already have inns or taverns created in your world, you can enhance their flavor and their playability with Section 2. Heck, it even has parts where you can, uh, all these different ideas to start your own bar fight. But instead of doing just a standard review on the book, I thought it'd be just a lot of fun to create our very own in using the random charts that are included in Section 3. So let's roll some dice and have some fun. So let's create our very own inn. Looks like we have a D10 as our first roll. And this is determining the structure and location. And I rolled a five. So our inn is located on a riverside and it is made of clay and brick. So that's pretty cool. There's also a chart here a, that you can roll a d20 for some unusual locations, such as a top, a shambling titan, underwater, or in the belly of a giant sea drake. So some really cool options there if you want to go with something a little bit more unusual. Let's roll our d20 and get a name for our tavern. And we'll need to roll this twice. Our first roll is a 16. And 16 is the horned. Our next d20 roll is a 10, and 10 is a river. So the Horned River kind of came together nicely, seeing that we are on the river side. So next we're going to determine our end characteristics using our d20. 10. So the Horned River is a bandit syndicate, and it has paid thugs, crime lords, and mercenaries. Starting to be a little bit of a dark place to visit. Next, we're going to decorate our inn, so we're going to use a d10, and we have a 10, which is low round tables with cushioned stools. All right, and next, we're going to decorate it with atmosphere and a smell. Our d20 gives us a 10 downtrodden, and for the smell... Four. Smells like mud. So, so you can kind of see the Horned River getting a little bit of personality. It's um, it, it's got some low life people in there, you know, thugs, crime lords, and mercenaries, and low round tables with cushioned stools. But since the place is downtrodden, it smells like mud in here. I, I would say that these tables and these stools are are old. They were they've probably been uh, repurposed. I would probably venture a guess that none of them match the and the cushions on the stools are probably leaking, uh, you know, whatever they use to fill them. They have rips and things like that. And um, everything else is just downtrodden and old. And it looks like there's been a lot of bar fights in here and uh, broken furnitures, cracks in the tables, things of that nature. And then if it smells like mud, maybe nobody wipes their feet when they come in. They just come up from the river and and it rains a lot in this area so there's probably muddy footprints all over the place so already the horned river has got itself quite a personality the next chart is a hundred memorable things that characterize our tavern so we're gonna roll a d 100 or a d percent 67 67 A board with contracts and jobs always has your names on it, detailing your activities. Hmm. All right. Well, this one's kind of interesting. I would probably say this is more instead of maybe having the player characters names on it. Maybe we just use this as a way to post side quests and, and things of that nature. Maybe some of these 
maybe they're not all uh, good quests. Maybe some mercenaries or crime lords are looking to um, increase their payroll, maybe to hire on a few more thugs. Maybe they need adventurers for security, protection, for retrieving items, things like that. So for the Horned River, instead of specifically having the player characters names on this, I would probably just explain it to him that there's all kinds of jobs and contracts and it looks like a lot of shady business that goes on in this tavern. Okay, so this is the Horned River, our randomly generated inn that we could put into our homebrew world. But we're not done yet. Now it's time to add our innkeeper slash bartender slash maybe the owner or servants to this inn and give it just a little bit more personality. So the first thing we need to do is determine our person's personality or appearance. And these are both D20 rolls. And let's just put innkeeper. Our first D20 is a five. Our innkeeper is mysterious. Our appearance D20 is also a five. They have a gap tooth. Now we have a D20 roll for clothing and I roll a three, which is barely clothed. So we have a mysterious innkeeper with a gap tooth and it barely clothed. Now there's also a D10 chart for exotic appearances, but I kind of like the way our innkeeper is shaping up already. So we're going to go ahead and skip that part for now. But we are going to move on to life's motivation. And this is also a D20 roll. 14. Raising a militia to overthrow the mayor. Hmm. Definitely a shady place, this uh, Horned River. Okay, so that's life's motivation. Now we're going to give our innkeeper a secret. And this is also a d20 roll. 17. Okay, uh, this is weird. Catalogs different types and colors of hair in a lockbox. All of this hair has been taken from guests at the inn. Wow, all right. I have got a good idea of what our innkeeper is like. So, uh, but let's add one more personality and that is a mannerism with another D20 roll. Eight, never finishes a sentence. Okay, very interesting innkeeper we have here. So let's do something. Um, go ahead and pause the video and jot down a few ideas of how you would describe this innkeeper as an NPC with regards to appearance. And you can include uh, race, age, gender, facial features, clothing, things like that, maybe mannerisms. And after you jot a few ideas down, and if you want to put them in the comments beforehand to kind of see what, uh, to compare to other people and stuff, that would be cool too. But uh, go ahead and pause the video. And then when you're done, unpause it. And I'll give you kind of what I'm thinking this, this innkeeper is going to be like. Did you get it? All right, great. All right, so here's what I'm thinking. This innkeeper is going to be... Uh, fairly obese, especially, you know, a bigger belly. We're going to make him uh, mid fifties, human male, and maybe used to be a sailor at one time. He's got quite a few tattoos, maybe, an, you know, the old anchor on the shoulder. And it looks like that maybe in his early days, he used to be like a really strong guy, but didn't take care of himself. And now he's just kind of run down and, you know, got the flabby arm syndrome and uh, just small patches of of hair, um, just a little bit on the sides and just, you know, a few patches up here um, with, you know, with the mysteriousness of him and, and speaking, never finishing a sentence when he, he doesn't talk a lot, but when he does talk, he kind of finishes it off with a grin where you can see a big gap in his teeth and maybe he laughs a lot at stuff that's not even funny just you know out of out of nowhere just gives like a little chuckle or a, or a laugh and he's got a lazy eye so it's one eye shooting one way 
and one eye is kind of looking at you and you don't know if he's looking at you while he's laughing or something like that um, to include like the barely clothed maybe our inn is in a more of a humid humid climate and he just chooses to you know he wears uh, um, pants and stuff but he goes shirtless all the time probably has you know you know, hairy chest, hairy back, and he's always hot, and so he's he's sweating all the time, sweating profusely, probably dabbing at his forehead quite a bit, and uh, you know, probably stinks. He probably has a little bit of a bo problem, and stuff like that. Raising a militia to overthrow the mayor, including with this, I would probably, if you remember that our uh, inn has a board with contracts and jobs so our innkeeper is going to be posting things asking for adventurers or able-bodied men that are tired of the rule of the town to and he's trying to put a militia together so maybe there's some kind of ads for that and depending on the the players that come through and stuff the pcs of what alignment they are maybe he tries to recruit them or something um, catalogs different types and colors of hair in lockbox taken from guests at the inn let's have some fun with this let's say he's got this fetish for just getting clumps of hair maybe even every once in a while just you know sews like a clump of it onto his head or whatever because you know he doesn't have much left and he's you know just got this weird fetish or something and he we're gonna say that maybe in um you know under the counter there is a safe and he's just got like a just like picture like a fishing tackle box and this guy's just got all these different clumps of hair in there and in fact will go as far as to say two things uh three things actually there may be a um, back to the idea of the board with the contracts and jobs maybe looking for um, uh, barbers or folks that make wigs or something like that. Um, if the players come in and one of them's a rogue, maybe he will try to slip the rogue some coin and ask him if he could sneak around at night and secretly clip some hair pieces off maybe a, of a few other of the guests. And um, the player that's playing the, the PC rogue could go around making stealth checks, trying to just cut off locks of hair and give them to the innkeeper for either information that he's trying to hear, uh, that they're trying to get or, um, or some gold or, or something like that. So uh, that is kind of the way I went with them. And uh, we'll, we'll give him a name. We'll call him the Clipper. So his, his name will be the Clipper. And even though a lot of people think it's something to do with boats or things of that nature, only ones that truly know his dirty little uh, fetish with wanting clumps of hair will know the real reason why he's called the Clipper. Okay, our last random table is 100 story hooks for our inn. So we are going to put a story hook or a plot hook or a side quest in our inn. And this is also a percentile die. So let me get my percentile dice out. And we are going to get number 32. 32. A local bakery is looking to win the annual pie contest, but a gluttonous demon threatens to ruin the festivities. Okay, so this is a little interesting, but we can make it work. Let's say that uh, the local baker does come into the Horned River and he is trying to win this pie contest. And it's a big deal in the area. Happens uh, annually, of course, like it says. And But there is this demon that maybe the baker made a an agreement with the year before he the baker won the year before made a deal with this demon and this demon said you know one year from now it'll be time to pay up and now this baker is is scared to death this demon is coming to collect his half of the bargain and so he staggers into the the horned river looking for some adventurers or mercenaries or someone that will help 
protect him or get this demon from coming and and uh, threatening to uh, not only ruin the, the the pie contest but also from maybe doing harm to the baker and as soon as the PCs in, uh, enter the enter the the horned river they will probably stick out as being more likely to help this guy so um, that's kind of what I would probably do with this plot hook something like that um, the player characters come in and they see um, this guy with an apron and flour all over maybe even a baker's hat looking really nervous maybe looking like he's in trouble and kind of sticks out like a sore thumb in the horned river Now that's the random table generation to create your own inn that you can find in Remarkable Inns and their drinks. But we're not going to end there because chapter two is bringing your inns to life. And we're going to take a look at a few of the parts. We're not going to look at all of them because they don't really match the inn that we just created. But we're going to look at a few parts and we're going to add just a couple more details to the Horned River. So I thought this was interesting. In the eight inns that are in chapter one of the book that are already fleshed out and ready to go, they have a disposition and what I believe that they are meaning by this disposition is folks that are not welcome at the end so maybe some ends have kind of a prejudice towards evil or those that represent a certain deity or maybe a race maybe some of them don't like half orcs or half elves or some taverns won't like rich people or they don't want poor people coming in so we can create a disposition or we can give the Horned River a disposition and how the patrons of this establishment act towards anybody like this that comes into the Horned River. So what I have chosen, and this is going to tie back into the Clipper as far as wanting to raise a militia to overthrow the mayor, I really believe that this would be an intolerant place towards nobles and government. Intolerant meaning that they would be ridiculed, bullied, maybe taken out back and beaten the crap out of, and things of that nature. So much to the point where nobles and government and probably richer folks and and those not looking for trouble already know that this place has a very bad reputation and know not to step into here. Now, I also put unwelcoming towards good aligned. So if some of our PCs come in and they're good aligned, um, the Horned River is not going to be in particularly forthcoming, but they probably won't deny access. They'll probably still say, uh, still serve them and everything. But that brings up something else really cool. We also have a disposition effects chart. And that is, and if you look right over here to my right, you'll see that. So as far as our good aligned characters, if they come in here, the unwelcomed tag, we may pick one of these, like uh, number three, they're denied to sit at certain tables or maybe some of the patrons scowl, scowl and act rudely. So those are really good ways to let our good aligned player characters know that they're not too welcome here at the Horned River. The next part is authority level and security. Now authority level is how much influence does our inn or our tavern have on the local community. And this one's going to be real easy for me. Right away, I chose the authority level of uh, one star, which is no local influence. The Horned River is not does not have any type of influence whatsoever in local matters or political affairs. So uh, that was an easy one. The second one is security. And if you look here over again to my right, you can see the the five different stars of security and a chance of an event happening. And here at the Horned, the Horned River, there is not much security. Again, we are a, among some low-life individuals. So as far as security goes, there is going to be a 75% chance or higher of some type of an event happening. So if we have our book open and our player characters are in here, we could roll a d20. And we get a 14. 
So while they're at the Horn River, the barkeep tries to calm two quarreling lovers who are getting increasingly loud. <laughs> All right. So uh, I never question what goes on at the Horn River and uh, neither should you. So yeah. So the clipper is out trying to keep two quarreling lovers down who are getting increasingly loud. Probably doesn't want to draw any attention to his, um, you know, to his establishment. And heck, while they're arguing, he may try to clip off a lock of their hair or something like that. Who knows? All right, so this is a fun one too. Uh, we can establish the wealth level of our inn. And since we've already said that it's uh, downtrodden, it smells like mud, we're going to go with a wealth level of one. And what that means is uh, there's very low prices. It's squalid. I'm not sure what squalid means, but it's less than poor, so that can't be good. But squalid, 50% lower prices, so things at, at the uh, the Horned River are going to be cheap. But what's cool about this is we also have another chart and another D20 for poor establishments. So let's roll this and see what shenanigans can happen at the Horned River. 14. The innkeeper pleads you to pay this month's taxes to the landlord. <laughs> okay, let me put this down. Okay, so this is interesting. So the clipper, our innkeeper, pleads for one of our player characters to pay this month's taxes to the landlord. And wow, all right, so that's interesting. Yeah, leave me a comment below. Tell me how you would run that. That's pretty neat. <laughs> all right, just some cool stuff. And of course, we have a chart for wealthy establishments as well. We could continue bringing our end to life with a lot of different lodging and services, but I'll leave that to you as far as if when you get a copy of this book to put that down for your end. There's not a whole lot here. I mean, we can do, you know, the cost of a room, you know, be like a copper piece per night just because this place is so, so cruddy. And there's all kinds of different other services that we could, we could get. Um, a lot of these are kind of high gold piece, which I wouldn't find, I, I, would, I wouldn't believe would be the norm here at the Horned River. Um, but there's all kinds of other stuff. Um, there's exotic services. Don't ask for that at the Horned River. <laughs> I, I, don't think, I don't think you'd want to do that here. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, but we'll skip that part. Not a lot that we can really put in there. There's another section in the book, Work and Training. Maybe if um, the players are looking to make a few quick bucks or, or a few quick gold pieces or looking to hire somebody to do something for them. And there's also Battled Masters, which we should probably create maybe a retired adventurer that's roaming about the Horned River and um, either looking for help or looking to help or looking for trouble. So food and drinks, what kind of food and drink would we have at the Horned River? I've already looked through this earlier and there's not going to be anything fancy here. And I would probably go with, uh, we're going to have grog. So we're going to create our menu. We're going to have grog, which is two copper pieces. You can get a mug. You can get a mug of ale for two silver pieces. And it's going to be dirty. It's going to look. It's going to look dirty. It's not going to look delicious at all. Now we do need to add some food to the menu. And just looking through the common dishes, I think fish stew would make something really that kind of fits what we have going on already. We'll charge two silver pieces for it, but it is not going to be good. We're going to pull one of the worst fish out of the river. We'll probably like a carp. And the players, if they order the fish stew, they're pretty much going to get this bowl of murky river water it's just going to reek of of, of river and uh, dirty fish and things like that and i'll probably just have like a carp in it um, or some other mud sucking uh, fish that's just terrible to eat uh, of course it'll be thrown in there whole and all probably maybe not even cooked all the way it still has the head on and it looks like it was just boiled in river water and put in a dish for our players to eat. You know, it's kind of just like sticking the, the head and the tail are both sticking out of one side of the bowl. And it's kind of just dipped down in there. 
and uh, I don't know, maybe maybe it's served with crackers or something like that, but it, it's not going to be that good. Now there is one more drink I would like to add, and that is Goblin Snuff. So this is kind of a unique one. Some argue whether this is an ale or a broth, as it's boiled goblin in the belly of a boar. This drink is both filling and a great way to start your murderous, drunken rampage of the village. So that sounds like it fits right into the Horn River. So we have, uh, we have grog, a mug of dirty ale, and goblin snuff on our drink menu, and fish stew on our uh, food menu. So just need one more dish to add. And if you can throw that down in the comments section below, what your idea is or what you would add to the Horned River's dinner menu or food menu, that would be fantastic. And I'll make sure to get it added. Thank you. All right, let's continue. Uh, this is a really cool section, but we won't be adding any to ours. Magical draughts, so, um, or magical drafts. This is all kinds of different concoctions that are very, very expensive, but give you some really cool abilities. Like this one here, you feel as healthy as a yearling. Your speed increases by 10 feet for an hour. That's pretty cool. So we'll have to add some of those to a future in, uh, but none of them really match what we have going on so far. Games and gambling. This is really neat. This has cards, chess checkers, nine holes, arm wrestling, and things of that nature. So, you know, we'll probably throw in um, arm wrestling and of course some um, some dice games or card games so there definitely be a bunch of this kind of things going on at the Horned River and of course nobody's gonna be playing fair we are going to scroll down to duels and bar fights and this is gonna do it for us we're gonna wrap it up here after this one but this is really cool and we're just gonna get to rolling a 20 sided die so our player characters are going to come in here. The security is low. We already know that. And we're going, to, we're going to give ourselves two options. So a bar fight is going to trigger. And the reason is 12. A mage is angered by our presence and a magic battle ensues. So obviously um, a local mage, and I'm guessing of evil alignment, or at least not very nice alignment, doesn't like us poking around the Horned River and starts a magic battle right away. So hope, hope our players are rested and ready to duel it out with the mage. And then our next section we could pick from, this is a D50 that we get to roll and we can create an epic brawl. So what I'm going to do is roll my percentile die and convert it to a d50 34 <laughs> 34 hot honey is poured on you and your enemies from above all right <laughs> yeah that'll definitely start a brawl if uh, my character had hot honey poured on him uh, he would be quite upset so here is the challenge i already asked for one more main dish to add to the menu. So if you could comment in the section below and add that dish, that would be great. But also give me one dessert that includes hot honey. <laughs> all right, and that's all I have for you. That is the Horned River. And we just did a random table creation of a tavern or inn that we could put into our homebrew world. Doesn't take long at all. And I don't know about you guys, but I love rolling dice and randomly generating things. And uh, this is a fantastic book. As I said before, there's so much more than just a random table generation. There's eight ends in there already ready to go that you can put into your game. Uh, section two, you can spice up what you've already created. And then section three, let's just have some fun and roll some dice and randomly make a in like the Horned Rivers. So that's all I have for you. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. If you want to do another one in the future, I'd, I'd be open to doing one. Maybe we'll do a, uh, a live stream and create one together, or I can just do another edited 
creation of a, another end that we can add and use in our games. So if you like this kind of content and had fun with this, be sure to subscribe. And if you would, there's a little bell next to the subscribe button. If you could click that so you can be alerted when I upload more videos. I'm going to try to do them once a week, maybe once every other week. Life's busy and stuff like that. But again, if you like this kind of stuff, uh, make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. We'll catch you next time. on. Our